Hi everybody, welcome to my video. I begin in the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. Dear loving Lord Jesus, I ask you as always to help me as I record your words. Please dip every word I speak on your behalf in your precious blood so that they reach the hearts and minds of all those you wish to communicate with. I ask this of the Father in your name. Amen. Okay, this is a fabulous message, absolutely fabulous. It's called The Holy Face of Christ. And my friend speaks to us here. Suddenly a large white kerchief or shawl appears before me in the spirit and is held up by a pair of hands. On it is imprinted the agonized face of our Lord. I am surprised. His right eye is almost closed. The right side of his upper lip is heavily swollen. The face is similar to that which appears on the Holy Shroud of Turin. It looks like a drawing in black charcoal. I then see the woman holding it up. She wears blue. It is not our Blessed Mother Mary. I assume it is Veronica, Saint Veronica, of the Holy Face. Now she speaks to me. She tells me that she has been instructed to let me know that I should honor and adore the holy face of Christ and make reparation for the offenses committed against it during the passion, for the pain he endured, and the humiliation caused by ill treatment, especially in his face. She also said that I am to dedicate the manuscript of my messages to the holy face but my original plan was to collate all of the messages into one book, but this will n now not happen. I was then given a prayer for devotion, which I forgot afterwards, as everything was so unexpected. January 13th. When I was at church in the chapel at the exposition of the Blessed Sacrament, suddenly some of the prayer that I was told returns to my mind, so I jot it down on a piece of paper from my bag. January the 14th. The remainder of the prayer comes to my mind and I, I write it down quickly. I am now at home. Suddenly Jesus is here and he speaks. Listen, beloved. Listen for a few minutes. Write, if you will, so that you may not forget. Honor my face. All of the humiliations I suffered, the battering of my face by unclean hands, spiritually as well as physically unclean, was one of the greater humiliations I suffered. My nakedness was the greatest. Being spat upon, I'm sorry, um, the nakedness was the greatest, but being spat upon, laughed at, and bruised with objects that caused pain to my face and the jeering into it of those whom I was trying to redeem was for me the second greatest humiliation. Make reparation for them. Adore and reverence the face that now holds the glory of the Godhead, but which was once so derided, so humiliated, so engulfed in pain. With one eye closed, with a swelling that was caked with blood, I still had to carry on. And I still loved. I still loved all despite this. Offer reparation and consolation to me for sinners. I ask you this personally. I repeat this. Offer reparation and consolation to me for sinners. I ask you this personally. This is why the holy woman was instructed to come to you. It is for her a joy to be able to do this at my instruction. Now this is the end of the message, but these are the things that I have to add. What we have here in the last few um, sentences is an example of Jesus giving a saint in heaven a privileged person in heaven, a reward, and that reward being <clears throat> him using them, them being able to assist him. That is their reward for a job well done on earth when they lived as a human. 
And this same lesson was revealed by our Blessed Mother Mary several times in the many messages I've given, Saint Joseph, Saint Teresa, Saint Philomena, Saint Jude. So I hope we are learning something here in how Jesus works. He can do it all himself. He is all-knowing and all-powerful and almighty. But he tries to share with people in heaven. He tries to reward generously in how they love to help him. Oh, it's such joy, especially for Mother Mary. He doesn't need any of them, but he wants them and loves them. He doesn't need us, but he wants us and loves us, every single one of us. So I continue. So, I invite all, but especially my non-Catholic brothers and sisters, to take note of such things that Jesus is revealing to us here. Our great saints of the past are not dead, but very much alive in heaven, and assisting the Lord in any way possible, because that is a reward that makes them feel wanted, and needed, and loved, and that is a wonderful reward that he gives them for a job well done on earth. And as you know, Many, and even most, of our great saints were lived very, very difficult lives and suffered much, and many were tortured and martyred. Okay. Now, uh, please note that the original cloth which Veronica held to the face of Jesus to comfort him and to wipe, to wipe off the blood and the sweat and the tears, it is still uh, in this world. It, it, is still, it has been preserved for the last 2,000 years and is kept in St. Peter's Cathedral in Rome. Yes, it still bears the imprint of Christ's face, his beautiful and holy face. Okay, and also, do you realize that Holy Veronica, now St. Veronica, risked her own life by stepping into the line of armed Roman soldiers to comfort our Lord Jesus? Do you realize that? She could have been stabbed or chopped. Her head could have been chopped off. They could have dragged her along and crucified her too. That's how much she loved the Lord. She risked her life to comfort him in any way possible. I ask you, would you have done the same? Would you give your own life for Christ if need be? Would you? May we be enlightened, blessed and humbled by the holy words of Christ contained in this message. And may we also pray with devotion to the holy face of Jesus and make reparation for the offenses committed against it during his passion, for the pain he endured and for the humiliation caused by ill treatment, especially in his face. I ask this all in Jesus' name. Amen.